Hi everyone. Welcome back on Lit Up with Annie. Today we have a session on Anglo-Norman period. Uh, but before I jump into it, I would like to thank all of you for so much love and support that you've all shown. Uh, I hope to keep getting that kind of support and love from all of you in the future also. Also, another uh, uh, detail that I would like to share with you is uh, this NTA English preparation is our group on Telegram. Uh, those of you who are new here, you can join us on Telegram and you can uh, message me personally and I will add you to another discussion group of ours. So let's begin with Anglo-Norman period. Now the term Norman, the term Norman comes from Northmen. Yesterday we saw a map and I told you to remember it by heart. I told you to remember some of the places like England, Scandinavian regions, Germany, France, etc. If I ask you that who were the Northmen, what would you say? I hope that you're right. The Northmen would be the Scandinavian people coming from the north, you know, uh, Norway, Finland, all of these areas that I told you about. So Normans, the origin of this tribe is actually Scandinavia. They had very discreet features. Uh, these men, Scandin these uh, Norman Northmen, they were very, very fearless kind of a race. They were huge, you know, huge muscular bodies they had and very, very terrifying. People were scared of this race. They were such big, fearless kind of a race. These people later on, and this is before I'm talking about very early, they had come along the French coast and they had conquered the entire northern country of France. But very surprisingly, you know, when they came to France, they left their identity, that fearless, big, big to rahenge, that fearless, terrifying race. They were no longer that when they came to France and they captured the northern regions of France. So they gave up that civilization of their own and very, very quickly they took that French uh, identity. If you uh, think about the French etiquettes, the French manners, very, very polished, right? So they, these rude people, yes, they were called rude, these Northmen, these rude people, they very quickly became the most polished race when they came to France. So as I said that they left their own civilization and they became this uh, very polished race, very polished people. What was left of them is the name that were, that is there of their new home. Any guess in France? Normandy. So Normandy, the name that is there of that place in France, comes from when these Normans, these Northmen had come down to France and captured it. So Normandy remained. Now these people, they came from Normandy. I hope you remember the map. I, I'm not showing it again. These people from Normandy, they came to Anglo-Saxon England. They marched after the conquest, after 1066, uh, when William marched towards Hastings. So these uh, people from Normandy, they went up. They went to Anglo-Saxon England. And of course, they brought with them very, very rich culture with them. It was a Latin civilization. And they also brought with them their romantic language. Now, what is a romantic language? There are so many romantic languages. Uh, just in short, the language which has a basis in Latin is called a romantic language. French is one of them. So they brought with them that Latin uh, civilization, that romantic language. Yesterday, I talked about a book, Doomsday book, which was um, 
given orders by William to be uh, established, Doomsday Book. In that book, we have a mention of these Normans, but it is not, they did not speak of themselves as Normans. They spoke of themselves as Frankie, that is Frenchmen. So they, leaving out their own civilization, leaving out their own identity, they even did not speak about themselves as uh, Normans. This was the origin of the Normans. After 1066, after the uh, Battle of Hastings, when William became the master, there were some consequences of that battle. And mainly three, mainly three results, three outcomes were there, important ones. First was, they brought with them the culture, the practical ideals of uh, the Roman civilization. Second was, very important, that they forced upon England a national identity. How? They said that we need to have a very strong centralized government. We don't want the loose authority that you have right now. They said to the Saxons. What kind of a loose identity, the loose authority was there at the time? They had a, a Saxon chief who would rule over their tribesmen. So when the uh, people from France, the Normans came, they said that this is very loose kind of an authority. We need something strong. So we need a very strong centralized government. This was the second outcome. The third outcome which is very important for us is that they brought with them a wealth of new language and literature. So now, yes, we uh, they did have a literature, you know, Anglo-Saxon literature, very important literature. We'll talk about it later. But when these Normans came to England, they also brought with them literature, French literature, which was very different from what was already there in England. These were the three most important outcomes of Battle of Hastings. Now, after they came, they brought in French with them. French became the language of the upper classes. It, it's always there, right? Uh, somehow, the natives believe that the colonizers are far superior than them. They start copying them. That's what happened here also. So even uh, the people, especially the upper classes, they started speaking French. It was like a status symbol for them now. The courts, the schools and even literature changed languages. It's, it all became in French. But there were people, the native people, the common man who did not leave their native tongue and they kept on speaking their own native tongue and the power of it was so strong that English absorbed all the body of French terms and words and French no longer remained the language of uh, importance I would say of schools, of uh, uh, courts, etc., of literature later on. So, English absorbed almost the whole body of French words and English became the language of the land later on. Now, we, we do talk about the different kinds of English also, modern English. What was this modern English? It was all a mixture. Because uh, English has also developed, it has grown because of the invasions that took place. Saxons I, if you're French I, Saxons, Anglo-Saxons I, so they brought with them their own culture, language. Normans I, they brought with them their own language, culture. It all got mixed. So Saxons plus French is equal to modern English. And all of these changes that we are talking about here were not quick 
there were very very gradual changes that took place over time at first when the normans came to anglo saxon england the saxons and normans they did not like each other at all there was hatred and you know how they lived they lived like master and slaves but very very soon this gap between them filled ye log aise rehne lage they became one with each other inseparable <laughs> and uh, there was anglo saxon chronicle it did not even end when the normans came it continued anglo saxon chronicle and um, in the anglo saxon chronicle there is a mention also the about this praise there is a praise that is shown towards the conquerors towards the normans early on they did not like the normans but slowly and gradually when they understood these people they uh, there was a liking towards them and the, there there is a praise that is shown towards the conquerors normans when they came to england it is said that jab scandinavia se norm normans had gone to france they did not like that land very much yes they dropped their own uh, identity and everything but when they came to england it was like a home for them and they developed a sense of nationality when they came to england they liked it very much and they became just as saxons uh, anglo saxons had become one with the natives there is probably something with the natives of england they give that vibe out they gave that vibe out i think that when whoever came to england wanted to stay wanted to make it as their home so if we look at the literature of the time especially uh, the praise songs the battle songs hai na they all helped in the formation of nationality <clears throat> for example if uh, we talk about our own country and we see that we see the patriotic songs they the, the the patriotic songs give a very different kind of a vibe right it makes us love our country more somehow similarly in literature when they had battle songs songs of heroes praise of heroes battle uh, whenever there was a battle song there was a battle poetry let's say it always was very grand for example beowulf right this literature helped in the development of nationality very very much people started loving their country people started uh, caring for it so nationality developed that we are from here we belong to this country but when the normans came the literary ideals of the normans was a bit different uh, i'll give you an example if you have read beowulf on one hand and if you know anything about uh, chonson the poland so you will understand the difference what is the difference you tell me literary ideals of norman was different in a way that they were different authors they wrote in different manners but the purpose was the same and what was that romantic story a romance filled in the literature all of the authors had one purpose to amuse the audience somehow and this is how it was very different from the anglo saxon literature now i am only stating facts here we are not talking about the defects of anglo norman literature if we do that we very well understand that anglo saxon literature was far superior than anglo norman literature but still this anglo norman or french literature 
it replaced the anglo saxon literature even even though anglo saxon literature was far superior than it so this is about anglo norman period almost all of it about the history of course we will move on to the literature of both these periods anglo saxon and anglo norman period now uh, i will talk about the, uh, the a little list of the kings <coughs> very small okay let's just quickly give a, a revision first take a revision uh, of what we saw till now we talked about normans as northmen who came from scandinavia they were the race of fearless big terrifying race of people they came to france they conquered the northern regions there were three outcomes of the conquest first was that they brought with them culture they brought with them practical ideals of roman civilization second they forged upon england a national identity a strong civilized government rather than the loose authority of a saxon chief over the tribesmen third was the wealth of new language and literature that they brought with them then french it became the language of the upper classes the courts the schools and literature but common man they spoke the native tongue but english absorbed the entire body of french words and became the language of the land what was the literary ideals of the normans we saw old literature that they brought with them it disappeared and the major feature of the idea the literary ideals of the normans was romantic story that amused the audience now we talk about the kings of england after norman conquest we saw uh, william the first william the conqueror who came from normandy 1066 battle of hastings he uh, was the king from 1066 till 1087 william had two sons william the second and henry the first inke bachcho ka naam to sabse pehle william the second became the king 1087 se 1100 tak he was unmarried therefore did not have an heir so after him henry the first the other son of william became the king from 1100 till 1135 for 35 years he was married two times uh from the first wife i think he had two kids from the second marriage there was uh, there were no children now what happened is he had one son from the first marriage but he died henry the first therefore or inka ek illegitimate child bhi tha but no legitimate male heirs of henry the first remained his son uh, isko correct kar lena s o n his son died in a ship disaster there was some ship tragedy that took place or inka beta he died there ending the norman line of kings in england it was called house of normandy house of normandy may we have william the first william the second henry the first three that's it so he he named his daughter as their heir you know very surprising here very early it is to name a daughter as his heir uh matilda her name was matilda but there was some negotiation also going on with his nephew he had two nephews one was theobald and the other was stephen <laughs> so some negotiation was going on with stephen to name as his heir but then he died and matilda was named as the heir lekin stephen was so much in hurry he took a ship to england quickly he crowned himself as the king uh, you know in the time matilda also uh ruled for a small amount of time somewhere around 200 days but there's hardly any mention of that so after S stephen became the king 1135 may and he remained there till 1154 we repeated him stephen guy 1135 to 54 that it is also called the period of anarchy 54 ends the norman period 
Now, period of anarchy. Me, as I said, I I told you about Matilda Stephen. So no one was actually very happy with Matilda being the queen, especially her husband, because her husband was somehow in <clears throat> some kind of a feud with Henry the First, the father. So, बहुत सारे actually candidates थे throne के लिए. सबसे पहले there was Robert. Robert was the illegitimate child of Henry the First. <coughs> then the two more uh, um, members two more uh, candidates were there for the throne the nephews as, as i said theobald and stephen now theobald and stephen belong to a different house it's called house of uh, blois so stephen from house of blois became the king and it was a very unexpected outcome why because out of the these two nephews theobald was the elder one but as i said stephen came running to england and he crowned himself the king so that's it for today i uh, hope you understood everything please like the video please share the video and please subscribe to it subscribe to the channel um and i will see you in the next session i am also going to begin side by side we are going also going to start with the literature of the period it's good no we on one hand we'll do the history side by side from these periods that we are doing anglo saxon and anglo normal we norman we will start doing the literature also so thank you very much i will see you bye bye